Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are now part of the 250 people worldwide who have registered to this webcast powered by your development. This webcast will deal with artificial intelligence computing for automotive. My name is Julie Robert, and I am marketing and communication officer for your development. Before we start the webcast, let me give you some basic information on this online event. You have the possibility to submit questions during all the webcasts. You can use the ask a question window at the bottom of the screen. We will answer as many questions today as we can, and for the remaining ones, we will follow up with you via email. Concerning the materials, please note that the presentation are already available and that can be downloaded from the resource section of the platform. Furthermore, you will receive tomorrow an email with the links to the recorded webcast session. To introduce you the company, Yale Development is a market and research and strategy consulting company providing marketing technology and strategy consulting services. Our field of competence are numerous and are covering uh, photonics and sensing, power and wireless, and semiconductor and software. During this webcast, I am pleased to welcome Yuan Shudi, market and technology analyst at Yo, and specialist of the computing and software industry, as well as Stefan Cordova, who will present career revision of the AI computing for automotive market. So let's start the webcast. Uh, please, Yuan, the floor is yours. Hello, hello. Thank you very much, Julie, for this uh, short in introduction. Uh, thank you, everyone, to be here today. Um, I hope that everything will go fine in this webcast. Uh, we are uh, in tough conditions today, but uh, hopefully we will be able to, to get to the end correctly. So on this slide, I'm presenting the agenda of, this, uh, of uh, the presentation, of the YOL presentation. We uh, will define first the scope. Then I will make uh, a short explanation of uh, the evolution of the computing industry, so from CPU to uh, uh, accelerations. Uh, we will enter in details in terms of uh, uh, on automotive, in terms of levels of autonomy. I will make some forecasts uh, around the artificial intelligence computing hardware that will need to reach the different levels of, auton of autonomy. Uh, I will try to explain uh, what are the technology and the market trends behind all this, uh, this forecast, uh, a short description of the ecosystems uh, and the battle around this uh, race uh, of, uh, for autonomy and a short conclusion. So let's begin with the scope. What we have done uh, since uh, three years now at YOL is to try to understand the impact of artificial intelligence uh, on the semiconductor industry and we have made several reports around that on the consumer smart homes and here we are will present you the the last analysis we are we have made uh for a report that will be released soon uh, uh around the the impact of artificial intelligence and the computing hardware for automotive so artificial intelligence is present in two different uh segments in automotive uh, one is for autonomy and the other one is for infotainment. In this presentation, I will focus specifically on the autonomy side. So a short explanation on what has been the trends the last 15, 20 years uh, from general applications to what we have today, uh, meaning neural networks. We have observed the shift of the performance focus for the semiconductor industry from general application with general workloads where we were, uh, 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 where we have a lot of integral operations that tend to be sequential in nature and the best chip to do this operation were CPUs for long times. CPUs have a few powerful cores uh, that tackle computing tasks sequentially. On the other side, on what we've seen to what we're seeing today, uh, at least for the last 10 years, uh, uh, we are in uh, neural networks, uh, deep learning workloads where we have floating point operations and this tends to be parallel in nature. The best chips that have been suited for a long time were GPUs, uh, which are hundreds of specialized, specialized sorry, cores that are working in parallel. So parallelization, parallelization is key and it explains why GPU are so popular for uh, deep learning workloads. But if we're going, if we try to go further, 
uh, in this uh, uh, explanation of this understanding of trends, uh, we went, we are seeing from three years now, uh, um, a shift from GPUs to dedicated ASICs to accelerators. So we went from scalar processing with CPUs that run at clock speeds in the, let's say, giga, megahertz range. And if we want to do some parallel computation for our vector, uh, vector operation, we see that that might take a long time to execute large matrix operation via a sequence of scalar operations. Then uh, we enter into the era of GPUs with vector processing and the same operation that are performed perform concurrently across a large number of data elements at the same time. And today what we see is uh, graph processing. And this uh, runs many computational processes. This calculates the effect of these vertices on other points and the overall processing works on many persists vertices and points simultaneously. We don't need a high precision to do that. And the names, there is, uh, there are a lot of marketing names. I just uh, point out some there. Uh, what we have chosen at all is to name that accelerations, but uh, our accelerators, but you will see neural engine, you will see tensor processing unit, neural network processor, intelligence uh, processing unit, deep learning accelerators, etc., etc. Each company as its own name for this type of unit or this type of chip. Uh, uh, just to remind that all along this presentation, I will call that accelerators. Uh, let's enter in the automotive industry. If we look at uh, the technology times market penetrations a long time, it's the plot we have here, we see that ADAS vehicles uh, uh, are uh, growing uh, and still increase for the next uh, 10 to 15 years slowly. Uh, it's market as usual. I will not speak about the COVID effect for now. There will be some dedicated slide later. For robotic cars, though, what we see is more about exponential uh, uh, penetration in the market and technology expectation too. And here we have all the characteristic of a disruptive technology. So the speed of the technology chance double every technology shift and autom autonomous vehicles will at one point, we expect to see that uh, in a few years from now, will uh, at one point will be a main transportation for uh, many people. So what we see today is that 2020 is or will be the first commercial implementation of autonomous vehicles through Waymo, for example. On slide nine, I'm presenting uh, just uh, this disrup disruption case for robotics where we see the two, these two different, these two distinctive paths for autonomous vehicles. So on one side, we have what we call ADAS vehicles uh, that are characterized by levels of autonomy from level one to level five. And on the other side, we have robotics vehicles that are increasing the, their autonomy not through more functionality, but by getting more and more speed. So today, uh, if we are looking at robotic vehicles, they are in designated place or designated areas at limited distance and let's say at medium speed. But the objective uh, to reach this robotic mobility as a service is to get uh, uh, at any speed anywhere. This objective is the same on the for ADAS vehicle, for the historical players, for uh, all this automotive industry, we already know. But they are increasing their autonomy by adding functionalities to that. And it's why we are seeing this level one, level two, level two plus, level two plus plus, and level three. Just a short remark on level three. Uh, it's very questionable today. Uh, uh, there is There are some OEMs that even decided to not go into this uh, level three and to directly tackle uh, the challenge uh, of level four or level five. And this is because there is a shift in the responsibility of, in case of accident, is it the uh, driver, is it the company? And in level three, there is this shift between both of them. So uh, is level three relevant? Is level three will exist at one point? Uh, at all, we are not really sure of that. And there is a lot of technology aspects too that uh, are entering into account that make this level three very, very difficult to, uh, to establish. 
So just a small word on uh, our work the last month on the COVID effect and on the impact on the automotive industry. So this uh, is uh, the results we have done uh, last month. Uh, we have done this work based on the production level at the production levels. So what we can see is that for uh, this year, we expect a, a decrease in production on around uh, 30%. And the next five years, it will increase slowly to get back to normal. So the impact of COVID has a huge impact today, this year, uh, 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 and probably next year, and then it will be probably uh, uh, go back to normal very slowly. So on this, and if we look at levels, we expect that by 2035, cars with autonomy level three, four, five will represent 25% of global production. The rest will be level one, two, and two plus. In terms of uh, research and development of for autonomy, I will explain that later in one slide dedicated to that, the impact of COVID, sorry, on this uh, research and development. I will explain that a bit later. But for sure, we can imagine that this COVID, uh, the COVID impact will uh, have a huge effect on the uh, level of cash that all these companies will have uh, for the, all the research and development for electrification and for autonomy that are the two biggest trends in automotive today. So let's focus now on the artificial intelligence aspect. And what we have done is to look at, OK, uh, what will be the type of chips that will be used for uh, uh, artificial intelligence and what will be the ISP, the penetration rate, etc., etc. And here, what you can see is directly the result of this analysis. Uh, artificial intelligence based on images, we have done this work based on the numbers and the type of cameras that are implemented in the cars and that will be implemented in the next five years in cars. And this will generate a total volume of 67 million units. So that means that for artificial intelligence in 2025, 67 million unit chips will be dedicated to do this task. Uh, and this is only for ADAS vehicles. I'm not counting robotic vehicles there. So what is the most important assumption is that what we see and what are the trends for the next five years, at least, is that we consider that for one type of camera, we, we have one chip which is used. So we can find multi -chips, multiple chips in one car, but fusion of inputs from multiple, pi multiple types sorry, of camera is not considered for now uh, uh, or uh, if we have different types, of, if, if we have meaning that if we have multiple cameras, it's always one chip per cameras in the cars for now. And it's something that we can see today, uh, but there is a trend. And uh, uh, if people are asking the question, I agree that there is a trend of centralization uh, with one computer like uh, in the car, like we can see in Tesla, for example, with their uh, FSD chip, uh, uh, our solution proposed by uh, NVIDIA, uh, the, which is uh, a centralized platform that will be able to manage all uh, these uh, cameras' inputs and uh, um, run the functionalities that are asked. In terms of revenues, uh, what we see is that the uh, Artificial intelligence market has just started, okay? It has been implemented by Tesla through this uh, full self-driving chip uh, I just talked about. Uh, and what we saw today, what we see is that artificial intelligence in automotive for autonomy is just uh, Tesla that is taking care of it for now, for now. Okay, so what we have done is just to look at what Tesla is doing, and it's why we have uh, on this plot the COVID-19 impact on Tesla production that has a direct impact on the revenues uh, produced by artificial intelligence uh, computing hardware for this year, 2020. And then uh, we expect in 2021, so next year, that all of our OEMs will integrate the solutions that will have uh, artificial intelligence embedded in it through, for example, an accelerator. Uh, uh, this is what we expect for next year, and it's, this is where the inflection point here. So think about 2021 for uh, the beginning of artificial intelligence 
for the whole automotive industry. Uh, in terms of number, what we uh, have is what we conclude is uh, a revenue for 2025 uh, to reach 1 billion, almost 2 billion in uh, 2025. In terms of technology trends, uh, from level 0 to level 2 plus plus, we have on one side, uh, on one side, sorry, on robotic uh, vehicles and the other, we have two different strategies. So for level zero to level two plus, two plus plus, they are differentiating mostly by improved functionalities, so, such as AEB or TGA or land keeping assist, LKA. And on the robotic side, as I said, the full autonomy was first realized in close area and at low speeds. And the next goal is to do uh, uh, full autonomy uh, everywhere at any speed. But what we observed is that these improvements are realized or will be realized thanks to the introduction of artificial intelligence algorithms and its related hardware. So implementation of AI, there is two different trends following what we have been done in consumer applications. So what we have seen in smartphones, for example, with the integration of uh, the neural engines in uh, uh, Apple 10 in, uh, three years ago, uh, what we expect and what we see is that the implementation in SOC for ADAS, in system on chip for ADAS, or a standalone chips of acceleration. And you will multiply this number of chiplets to get uh, the computing the computing hardware for robotic play, uh, robotic players uh, today and for the, ne for the next few years. If we look at this uh, uh, example, we can focus and we can look at what uh, Intel mobilize next solution. Or, uh, and I, I know that BMW, for example, has presented uh, yesterday its roadmap for uh, using Mobileye IQ5. And what we see is that between the IQ4 and the IQ5, uh, not only the performance of the chip is uh, uh, different, is uh, a factor 10, uh, but there is uh, uh, this difference of performance is done through uh, these accelerators, what we call the deep learning accelerators. And they introduce that in their next uh, solution in the IQ5. Uh, which has already been tested by OEMs and that will be in production uh, next year. If we look even at the NVIDIA solution. So NVIDIA is a very interesting solution because uh, they are selling GPUs and GPUs are already pretty well suited for artificial intelligence. But even though, uh, if we look at the uh, Xavier's SOC, which is announced for level 2 plus plus and that will be probably in production next year too, we see that even if they are selling GPUs and proposing uh, GPUs, uh, uh, the next generation of SOC for ADAS will embed these uh, accelerators, what we call to uh, DLA. So this trend of acceleration is seen for from all the players, all the players are using and they want to integrate this type of acceleration because there is this huge need to introduce artificial intelligence in the uh, autonomy software stack. And everything is combined, software and hardware, hardware and software. Here you have a map, a mapping of all the chips from level one to uh, robotic and level four and five uh, from 20. 2025, to, uh, 2020, 2025, and 2030. And what we see, the trend we see is that uh, there is an ADAS computing race. And the goal, obviously, is to get a higher performance for minimum com consumption. And the next battleground for the ADAS is now. It will be now. It will be in the next few years between level 2 plus, level 2 plus plus. And as I said at the beginning, level 3, we are not sure that level 3 will happen at one point, but what we see is that we went from 0 0.1 tops per watt to uh, 1 tops per watt, and the next uh, uh, step is to get to 10 tops per watt. And that can be achieved uh, thanks to uh, the addition of this acceleration, thanks to the introduction of artificial intelligence algorithms uh, the, for uh, recognition, for example. So today, ADAS computing is using chips between 2 to 20 watts range, and robotic vehicles are using chips uh, uh, above 100 watt uh, range. Uh, 
in terms of evolution of this computing hardware, here you have uh, uh, the type of uh, computing behind each type of uh, radar. So uh, on the first line, you have the levels and the functionalities associated to each level. On the second line, there is the table representing the technology penetration of uh, each type of computing hardware. So in orange, we have a microcontroller or CPU. In or uh, uh, in uh, light orange, we have the FPGA. In green, what we call vision processor. Uh, uh, so vision processor is kind of, it's mobile eye. Uh, the vision processor like for example and centralized platform as it's uh, uh, it is seen for tesla or for nvidia for example or what nvidia is proposing so what we expect is that uh, from level one to level five we will have the centralized platform which doesn't mean that it's a f just one chip for today, this is the case, but if we associate three or five or five, uh, three, five three, four, five or six uh, mobile eye, that can be a centralized platform too. Okay. So what we can see is that uh, uh, we will go more and more uh, through this uh, trend of centralized platform. So this is not only because we need more computing power, but there is a huge trend too in the automotive to reduce the number of ECU and to be able to have just one uh, uh, module uh, that will take care of all the computing aspects uh, in the in the automotive, at least for automotive. Uh, for business model, we see uh, something very classical. We have four different business models. We have a car, manuf car manufacturer on one side, so the, the OEMs. We have uh, the people that are building the brain of the car, so auto for autonomous driving, software and IP hardware. Uh, we have all the aspect of electrification too, uh, for battery and powertrain manufacturer. They are turning cars into electric power systems. And we have the people that are uh, uh, building cars around the idea of making uh, uh, a service of mobility, name mobility as a service. And these are mainly pushed by uh, tech giant technology. Uh, such as Uber, Lyft, or even Google through, uh, through uh, Google through uh, Waymo. And what we see is that the major value flow will, be to, will go to the to this service provider, and more and more car manufacturers are looking at this uh, business model of mobility as a service uh, with uh, with a good eye. Let's let's say, let's let's uh, say this like this. Okay. Finally, if we look at the ecosystem, we have two different ecosystems. We have uh, ecosystem for ADAS vehicles on one side uh, and robotic cars on the other side. Just because for ADAS vehicles, the players are not the same, the ASP pressure is not the same, the technologies are not the same than for robotics. Uh, this is true for computing, but this is true for sensors too. In both of this ecosystem, we see that the supply chain are organizing. So, uh, uh, ADAS ecosystem are built around historical automotive OEMs, uh, and uh, supply chain going less and less through tier ones. They are still there. I'm not saying that tier ones are, are not part of this uh, autonomy uh, uh, trend, but they are directly. Um, OEMs are di directly discussing with computing players, with software players. Uh, for robotic vehicle ecosystem, they are built around full stack solution uh, partnerships. They are built around partnership, and this is where this is important, uh, such as proposed by NVIDIA or Apollo. So this partnership, this is because the path to full autonomy uh, through robotic cars is tough. There is a lot of complexity uh, to uh, get from scratch to full autonomy uh, to build a, a, a car from scratch to full autonomy. So, as I said, there is two main ecosystems with NVIDIA, which is leading the computing hardware ecosystems. Uh, and on the other side, we have Apollo, uh, which, uh, uh, which manage a huge ecosystem and which is very promising. Just for... Uh, to, to, to look at the... When we look at the impact of COVID, we have analyzed what well what, what was the positioning of uh, each OEMs, okay, their level of uh, investments, their level of autonomy. And we can see that we have uh, three types uh, of strategies uh, around four types of players. So uh, if we look 
at uh, uh, the different players. We have Tesla, for example, which is developing the full solution by themselves. Uh, and this, uh, uh, looking at the COVID, uh, the COVID effect, the COVID impact, uh, we expect that Tesla will not be so much impacted because they are uh, uh, increasing their autonomy step by step. And this is already a huge focus in their strategy, uh, electrification of and autonomy. This is what they, they are already focusing, uh, both of them. For some OEMs that develop that want and that are developing their own autonomy stack, but they are using the silicon provided by the computing hardware player on the top. Uh, we see that the COVID, we expect that COVID impact will um, uh, make these advancements that will be slower. Okay, so we do not expect maybe 21 will be the first year, but will, it will not be uh, as impressive as or as important that we expect uh, uh, last year, for example. And for other for other players that are already using full solution provided by computing hardware company and software, and that are not doing their own software, this will be much more complicated for them. So. Just to, to, to be clear around this, what we see is that uh, all the cash which is lost today uh, will not be burned tomorrow uh, in autonomy. For these players, for most of these players, at least in Europe or in Japan, the main budget or the main uh, uh, will is to uh, tend to electrification. That's, that is the first uh, will for these players. And autonomy came in second place. So what we expect is that that some players will simply stop uh, 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 this race in autonomy and that will, they will use uh, full autonomy or, or, or functionalities that will be fully provided by computing hardware player in a few years. So just to uh, conclude on that, uh, and the key points around this, levels of, to, of autonomy should not be considered as incremental as we are see. We, are, we have not level one, level, level zero, level one, level two, uh, etc. We have level one, level two, two plus, two plus plus. So uh, uh, this is because the underlying technology are evolving, uh, thereby requiring, requiring intermediate levels. This is very linear, it's not incremental. Level three is questionable as liability and regulation are not included. So I repeat that many OEMs have decided to skip this level three and are working directly on level four or five. <clears throat> I want to stress too on the point that ADAS vehicle and robotic vehicles are two completely different markets. Uh, ecosystem, technology, ISP, objective, business model, everything is different. And the impact, the entrance of artificial intelligence uh, uh, through acceleration that enables the uh, increasing number uh, uh, of functionalities. And this is parallel to the increase of number of sensors uh, around the car. For ADAS vehicle, AI has been introduced since 2016 in Tesla vehicles. And uh, to last year, they have begun to introduce uh, their own uh, dedicated platform. Uh, however, as accelerators will be embedded in next generation SOC as by every computing hardware player, uh, Xilinx, I, as I show Xilinx, uh, uh, Nvidia, uh, Ambarella, Toshiba, TI, and obviously uh, Mobile, uh, Mobileye. So we will see that the beginning of uh, uh, the, uh, the entrance of artificial intelligence in automotive will probably be uh, 2021 and that will spread very quickly. For robotic vehicles, AI has been in use for years, uh, used based on GPUs, mainly by, uh, provided by NVIDIA. Uh, and because we will need fusion of multiple inputs, uh, inputs and they, uh, it's already in place for robotic vehicle, a combination of GPUs and accelerators in the same SOC or as two different sheets will be used in the future. Finally, I want to stress on this point. The application is key focus should not initially be on the performance of power, but on the application technology. So a lot of uh, warning I want to make for this, uh, uh, the, the warning I want to make for this presentation is that do not forget software. The software stack to make the chip uh, uh, efficient and obviously the algorithms uh, that uh, make the uh, automotive uh, autonomous. So this is the two different software that some 
times and uh, I see that in the industry uh, uh, there is not a lot of stress on that and uh, a lot of people are looking more in terms of performance per watt than on the software stack and for us uh, it's, a, it's a mistake. The last three points just to keep clear on that Tesla was the first in introducing AI and is driving the AI hardware trend from computer vision AI with GPU to accelerators. Accelerators are keys for computing AI algorithms and all along the value chain, software should be the focus for success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johan, for your presentation. Uh, we will now continue with uh, Stefan Cordova, who will present Calorie vision of the AI computing for automotive market. Stefan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julie, and thank you, Johan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Um, um, so let's start by a brief introduction of Carre. And um, so Carre is a, is a fabulous company designing a very unique, uh, a new type of mini compressor for intelligent system. So we have spin-off of uh, the CEA, a well-known uh, research lab in France. So mainly located in France, Carrera is mainly located in France. We have office around the world. We are about 100 people today. Uh, we are a public company with industry market leaders as uh, NXP and Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance for automotive industry, and also Safran and MBDA for aerospace industry. So Carrera has, has more than 10 years experience and how in the field of mini core technology now. So we are just released our third generation processor, mini compressor, um, um, early this year. And um, we have um, 30 patent families to protect our technology. Today, Calray is focusing on um, automotive and data center for our products. So uh, what is, um, so what are an intelligent system and why are we targeting this market? So the processor industry has seen three major revolutions, basically. So in 17s, uh, with the computer and the single processor, basically, at that time, increased performance, uh, you had to increase the frequency. But the higher the frequency, the higher you consume. Then in the 90s, we have seen the emergence of the mobile phone and importance of power consumption. So industry moved to completely new architecture. So we all thought that the computer processor was perfect match with the mobile phone. But in fact, it happened it was not true. And a new technology arrived, uh, which were really, really focusing on, on the power consumption. So now the era is changing. And this is the era of data, the need of analyze on the fly BM of data and make decisions. And this is what we call the intelligent system. And these intelligent systems are largely based on artificial intelligence. So this type of application requires, and it was well mentioned by Johan, a new type of, uh, of processing capability, of processor, a new type of accelerator. And that's really the, the, the focus that uh, Carrera is, is, is in. What is interesting is at the same time, oh, sorry, yeah, okay, sorry. So then let's explain what is a, an intelligent system to... Uh, <clears throat> um, so if you want to explain to a kid what is an intelligent system, the most easy way to explain is that you take example with an autonomous vehicle. So it is uh, it's drive alone and, and it, has, it can take some decision by its own. And what is very, this, this is very interesting and it has well, been well covered by Johan is the automotive industry is changing. And this, this push to uh, think differently the way that you are going to, con to, to let's say, to create the, the, new, the, the new car. So, and this is, this is the first example of, and this was mentioned also by you, and so car makers also become a service provider. So he has to think about the car as an open platform. He has to think about the software ecosystem or the application ecosystem. So it's really, it, 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 it is a different factor, factor for, for a car manufacturer to bring values and services to the customer. 
It's very similar to, to mobile phone industry, actually. Then the uh, autonomous car also push um, to have much more data, to have much more application, and to have much more functionalities. So today, in the car data, we are thinking about terabyte per day generated by a car, by a single car. So it's obvious um, it's, it's pushing for more performance, it's pushing for more software, and it will complexify a lot the system. So the performance increase will be mostly driven by the capability of the car to drive alone. And this, is, this rely, of course, and this is the term of, of the today uh, webinar, is uh, it's really rely on AI. And this is the only way to drive correctly a car, is to use massively uh, artificial intelligence. But it's important because we are in the vehicle and we have passenger in the vehicle to make sure that this is not going to um, jeopardize the safety and the security. And you have to come with new technology, of course. You need new technology for AI. You could take your technology from data center, but it's not, it's not, it does not work because it, it needs to be safe. So you really have to have a specific technology for, 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 the, for the automotive industry. So what is a new generation uh, um, vehicle and what does it mean? So today vehicle, uh, you, as it was mentioned in the previous slide, you have different complexity from level two to level, to level five. And, but even if the complexity is different from the, diff from, from the, the level of the, of the product, of the car, it requires always the same and similar application. So you always need to have a large or different type of applications. It goes from a decision, from, to take decision, it goes to a past planning kind of application, then goes to perception based, largely based on AI or even on computer vision. So, and, but it's, it's not the only thing that you have to take into account with a new generation vehicle. As I said before, it should be open in the sense that you have to integrate, incorporate new type of application and in, in, the easy, in the really easy manner in the sense that it could be a software upgradable uh, feature. And the uh, example of Tesla Autopilot, is, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's, they can upgrade the feature of the car just by upgrading the software, or they just upgrade the car, the, the, sorry, upgrade the hardware and giving more features, but without changing the car. So it's completely new concept than, than before. And, and this is important because the car is, needs to be open, but need to be flexible. And Calais, we truly believe open platform is, is a key uh, uh, for this market to deploy. That's, that's, that's a real different fact, uh, differentiate factor uh, for car, car maker. Today, car is already very complex. And um, let's, uh, I think today an average high-end car is, about, is having about 5,200 processor issues. And any new functionality that you want to add means that you have to add uh, processors. So we understand, we've discussing with our customer, car makers won't want to change, want to change this. That's cri critical for them. So they are thinking about more centralized functions in order to reduce the, 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 um, the complexity of the, of the vehicle. So if you also consider a traditional car maker, this means that um, you have a, a lot of models, and from the high ends to the low cost uh, vehicles, you have many models. Of course, you can't afford to have one architecture and one software for each model. You really need to think about scalability and flexibility of your architecture in order to address the low cost model and the high end models. So that's very important as well. And on top of that, you have the usual and the standard, I mean, um, and obvious. Um, elements that you have to add in your car. Of course, performance, we all speak about performance. Johan also spoke about that a lot. Performance is very important, but cost is also very important. 
today we are speaking about an industry with high volume. So the cost is very important. So you can't afford to have a lot of computers and very expensive processor in the car. Uh, you really have to take into account that. And of course, you, having more services and more performance does not mean that you need to play with the safety and the security. So again, and this is an important message that I want to add, it's every time the safety must be put at the first priority. So if we zoom a little bit on the key challenge of the, that we, are, we believe are critical for the car industry, the first is performance, of course. An intelligent car um, needs to have a lot of compute power. That's clear. And we are speaking today for the probably the most important, uh, about 150 tops, 350, 350 tops. So usually this is what we can see on data center, but absolutely not in the car. So it's definitely something that has to be changed. You have to find a technology and processor that are capable to do this level of performance without impacting the power consumption or the safety. And if you, if you want to increase the performance, but you have already a very complex system with a lot of computers, and it's already very hard to upgrade this, uh, this, uh, this system because you have too much computers. There is no way to increase performance in such system. So when you want to increase performance, you have also to think about aggregation, centralization. You have to reduce number of computers in the car. This is mandatory. So the job of the system architect is, is become very hard, very hard uh, uh, in the car OEMs or tier one, because they have, they have to bring the right level of performance to execute the software that you want to execute in the car. But he has to reduce the number of, 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 of uh, computer that you have in the car. So of course, this person has to find the right technology which allow to aggregate and simplify the system by adding, uh, by merging function onto a, a simple number of, of, of a, a processor or computer. So this is what, this is the Carre architecture. So this is our MPPA mini core processor. This is the brand new Coolidge processor, which has recently been announced. This processor is a free from interference and deterministic uh, mini core processor. So it allows by architecture to run multiple applications on it. And it is based on a different, uh, arch different type of architecture. So what we have done at Carre, we have designed our chip in order to take the advantage of the DSP for all the time predictability and the real-time processing and take the ability of the CPU and ease of programming of the CPU. And we merge it in, the, in, our, two, in our processor. And this is, this is what we, we, have been, uh, we have been achieving with our processor. This processor, uh, sorry, something is wrong with my slide because there is something missing, but okay. So this processor is an 80 cores processor with 80 core processor. So you have the capability with the 80 cores and the 80 core processor to run a wide range of applications, starting from a CNN, but also moving to a very complex uh, mathematic app acceleration and uh, even having uh, other, several CNN running on the, on the, on the, same, on the same chip. So if you want to, to uh, see how we can use this architecture, it's, it's simple. So each C, it's a cluster. A cluster is 16 cores and 16 core processors. Each cluster can be seen as an independent computer unit. So each cluster can run its own application. So you can imagine that with this kind of uh, architecture, it's quite easy to port several applications on the same processor using the capability of the cluster and the spatial partitioning of the cluster by moving different applications and running different applications on the device. So in this case, we have typical application that you can find on, on, the, on the car. So 
big CNN, which can do the segmentation of the road, for example, and then in addition, the computer vision, which can do the pre-processing of the camera, the post-processing. And then you have a path planning, which helps the, the car to select the right trajectory when detecting an obstacle, for example. And then another CNN, which can be used for road sign detection. That's the basic thing that you can have in the car. And this is, for example, this is a use case that we, have in, we are implementing with a customer today. So this is nice because on this, in fact, with this processor, you can save a lot of other processors because each function that are running on the MPPA today uh, you need, are running usually on different processors. So here they can run independently and simultaneously on the same chip. So you start to think about the way to simplify the system by reducing number of processors. And what is important, we spoke about AI a lot. This is the theme of the, of the webinar, but not AI is not everything in the car. So you must have also the capability to run other applications on, the, on, the, on the inner system. So it's very important to have the, abil uh, the ability to accelerate other applications than just AI. Or, or, uh, so computer vision, path planning, mathematics are very important application that needs to be accelerated also into the, 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 the car. So how we do that? And um, so to allow software developers to implement such complex system on MPPA, so we are, at Carrey, we have defined a CAF. CAF is a Carrey acceleration frame, framework. It's basically a simple way to program the mini core architecture and give access to the developer to different way to program the machine. A direct way, this is accessing to what we call direct programming. So you can access directly to the standard uh, programming model, C, C++, OpenCL. So very standard, no proprietary language here. Or you can access to, to optimized library. Again, standard libraries, which can accelerate computer vision, which can accelerate mathematical, so with a BLAS or LAPAC, and then CNN libraries to accelerate any type of, 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 of the CNN. So this is interesting because this framework allow to really build your system onto the chip. And it manages the faculty and the capability to have, with, thanks to the spatial isolation of the MPPA, to play with the function and map the function where you want on the processor. And this is interesting because this framework is also valid. Um, it's, it's, it's perfect when you have an existing uh, processor in the system. So basically today the car has a host processor. They have a legacy, which is usually based on x86 technology or ARM technology. And they are running the main application on this device. What they need, because they need new functions, they, have, uh, they want to introduce new functions or new services. They want to accelerate. So you, they can use one or several MPPA processor and offload all the compute intensive function onto this, this processor without changing the main application. You just scale using standard API and standard programming model. You scale the performance using an external chip, which is in, in this case the MPPA. And of course, with the, cap, the, 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 the guarantee that as this processor is uh, respecting automotive uh, certification, you are also ensuring the overall safety of the system. So of course, we can't speak about AI without explaining the tools that allow AI developer to develop on a machine. And as every other processor vendor, Carré has developed his own tools, which is called CAN, which stands for Carré Neural Network. So as you can see, by the way, we like the later CAN because we used to we used to use this later every one every time for, for our product, but CAN is our solution for machine learning programmation, and it it has two functions. One function is a code generator, so it takes um, uh, it takes information from basic from a standard um, framework from TensorFlow Cafe and generate a code which can be directly executed on the on the MPP processor, or it is also a libraries which propose to the to the to the end user to the developer 
to have access to an optimized libraries of, of machine learning. So this is very powerful tools to prototype uh, directly um, the, your, your, your machine learning problem onto the final target, which is the MPPA. We mentioned privacy. I have, I have put it several times in my presentation, the scalability. And this is very important point. Again, if we want to propose to a customer the capability to keep same hardware uh, architecture and same software architecture amongst the full pro product range, the full car models, this is Sim this is going to be to simplify the, the, the life of, of, of uh, our customer clearly. And today, it's very important to be able to reduce investment on developing new architecture or developing new software because you are changing models. And that's the big issue of our customer today. And they really want to solve it by having a scalable platform, an open scalable platform fully software programmable platform, but scalable means that you keep the same software over your product range just by adding, adding accelerator. And this is exactly the way that we, are, uh, we have designed and we have thought our, 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 our product is from a, a cluster IP, which can be integrated in a third party SOC vendor, for example, going to the single MPPA processor, which can be used as an accelerator to an existing host processor, to even a multiple processor, uh, multiple MPPA processor to, I don't know, to arrive to a range of 400 tops performance if you really want very high uh, um, number of tops or number of performance. So this is very interesting way because you save the software development with that. You just use the natural scalability of the technology of the processing technology to scale up your performance and adapt your performance to the models, the vehicles and the model that you want to, to, to design. And this is exactly what the, the way that LXP and, and Calre are working with, within our strategic partnership. So as you know, NXP is one of the leader in car industry with a strong now in this field and in the safety area. So what is interesting within this partnership that with the next generation of NXP Blue Box uh, Autonomous Driving Reference Platform, uh, it's pretty well, I mean, this is well known, including the S32 uh, family of safe uh, automotive processor and also the Layerscape automotive grade processor. You add, you, you integrate the Calre MPPA uh, processor and you provide a very scalable, safe, and fully programmable solution to your customer. So with both companies, we are able to have a, a complete solution addressing the whole range of car models. Yeah. Having the performance, the scalability, the programmability, of course, and of course, the last but not least, the safety. And this is today a pretty unique um, platform that you can have. So my conclusion is, uh, this is my last slide. So this is the um, a zoom of, of, of our Coolidge processor. So we announced the Coolidge at the CS this year. Uh, and uh, we believe that with this new processor, this new, this new MPPA technology is the perfect match to address all the new challenges of the car industry that we, are, we have covered before. And uh, this open platform, hello, as it is a CPU based platform, it's simple to program and it brings very high performance. Coolidge include dedicated co-processor, which are very efficient for CNN acceleration or for computer vision acceleration. So this allows us to have, to achieve performance on 25 tops, 50 tops, and even 100 tops within the same processor. So that's very interesting. All this 
with an ASIL B level processor, which is available now on the market. Thank you very much for your time. This was my last slide. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you all for this relevant presentation. Uh, we are now going to wrap up with the Q&A session. As we are quite uh, out of time, uh, we will only answer uh, one question per speaker, and we will follow up via email for all the remaining ones. So the first question is for you, Yuan, regarding the automatic marketing trend uh, based on your presentation, the sales recovery of the loss in 2020 seem will be in 2022. What about expectation in 2021 device for automotive sales? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, so what I've shown first, what I've shown is the production. It's not sales. Okay. Uh, and sales are a lot depending on sales of automotive for the automotive industry are a lot depending of psychology uh, of consumer. So what we expect is that for next year, there will not be a lot of sales. Uh, I, we are still still working progress, but we have compared, uh, we have looked at what happened in 2008, even if, uh, even if uh, the crisis was, was not the same at all, the, we would try to understand what was the behavior uh, uh, 12 years ago. And we have seen that the sales have restarted almost two years uh, after the, the crisis. So it's what we quite expect today and that will be for automotive and all the device behind. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Johan. Uh, for you, Stefan, uh, from your presentation, uh, the attendee have understood that you can yeah, that you can execute multiple applications. Does it mean this could be application with different level of safety? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so, of course, the spatial partitioning of the of car processor allows this uh, repartition of, of application onto the different clusters. And yes, uh, definitely each cluster can run different applications which can have a different safety uh, level. And we can even, we have the, the capability to even isolate a cluster from the rest of the chip, which allow really severe partitioning between safety um, application. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, so the webcast is now over. Uh, you will soon receive email with the link to the recorded session. Uh, also, please free to share the presentation with your colleagues. And finally, please let me remind you that you can find all our reports on our website, i-micronews.com. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have additional questions. You can find our contact details on the last slide of the presentation. Thank you all for joining us today and have a good day. Fini. C'est bon. Il y a toujours, il y a toujours un petit point de latence, c'est pour ça qu'on attend.